Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video I'm going to be doing sort of a new format for my, I guess, wrap-up monthly videos. Because, you know, I've been staying really on top of those over the past, like, two years. Um, but I plan on trying to get back into, like, you know, the book tube staples and stuff as I schedule myself along and whatever. So instead of kind of going over every single thing that I've read, like, over the course of a month or whatever, I'm just going to take, like, the top like four or five that either I find like most interesting or the best or maybe the worst or something like that um just to try something a little bit different how I can keep them a little shorter I don't know sometimes I just feel weird just kind of like doing like the one minute little blurb or 30 second blurb on like you know the 10 or 12 books or whatever that I finish in like a given month or whatever so we're gonna try it out this way so leave uh, some comments down below what you think of this if you think it goes a little bit better or if you actually want me to just kind of like <laughs> just rattle off everything that I read but uh, let's just um go ahead and get started and we're gonna be doing this will be the month of May and then I'll do the month of June and I'm just gonna like kind of start there and forget about like pretty much like two years there where I didn't like do it very like um consistently I should say so yeah let's just go ahead and get started First one here is Broadsides from the Other Orders, A Book of Bugs by Sue Hubble. And this is a book that I picked up uh, when I went to a bookstore. I was, we were on a, um, my friend and I, my friend Tim, we were on a road trip and we just like were driving through a town and they had like a really cool, uh, like friends of whatever town they were, a library, a uh, bookstore where everything, I think hardcovers were five, paperbacks, I think were three or four. And then, like, I think mass market ones were, like, one or two or something. But they are all in, like, really nice, good condition and stuff. Like, it was really well organized. And they had, like, a whole section on, like, science books. I think about, like, ten. I think I... I don't know. I think we filmed that video where we did the book haul for that. But I don't know if I actually ended up posting or not. But I do have it somewhere. So I'll probably end up... <laughs> might retroactively just throw that in there uh, at some point. But anyways, we have a broadside from the other words. I thought that was just kind of a cool title i guess uh just for a book on um entomology and stuff uh i've never heard of the author sue hubble but i really enjoyed kind of the cover as i was kind of like flipping through there's a uh, lots of different uh sort of like little drawings and illustrations and stuff which i thought was pretty neat and just kind of going over the index uh or the contents i should say uh each chapter picks like a different order of insects and a lot of them uh were fairly Maybe not unknown per se, but not a lot of stuff is written. Like, for example, you know, Dipteris flies, but not a lot of people have written whole chapters on black fry, excuse me, black flies, you know, water striders, katydids, um, gypsy, well, I guess gypsy moths have been written about quite a bit, like surfid flies and stuff. So I thought it was kind of neat that she kind of picked some uh, insects that really don't get a lot of attention, a lot of love, stuff like that. And overall, I found the, uh, the book uh, really interesting. She starts off with just something. At first, I was like, oh, no, is this going to be like kind of this like silly softball type thing? I think it was um, a butterfly she started off with. Uh, but what's really cool, she kind of does a really good blend of sort of her, I guess, field work probably isn't the best way to put it. She usually goes into the field uh, with someone else that's like kind of into whatever insect group she's talking about, whatever order she's uh, discussing, kind of blending it with all like the current science and stuff. Um, with those uh, insects. I think it was written like the early 90s. So some of the stuff uh, that, you know, we might have discovered since then. But still, it's pretty cool. Uh, kind of learn, like, like I said, in the first chapter with butterflies, she's out, out there trying to uh, capture them and stuff, uh, going up a different mountain and stuff, seeing like the different habitat ranges and kind of how it's changing over time and whatnot. Uh, so it's kind of cool seeing both professional sort of field work like that. And then also like, for example, when she did uh, like the Daddy Long Legs chapter, I mean, how many people write about <laughs> Daddy Long Legs or Granddaddy Long Legs uh, in some parts of the world? It's kind of funny how she discusses sort of the, etymolo the etymology of entomology sometimes, um, why they're called like certain things in different places. But, you know, she captured a few of them herself and kind of like observed them and, you know, try to figure out what she could uh, with that. So anyways, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, like, for example, the ladybug chapter two, she go actually goes out harvesting ladybugs, um, where, I don't know if that's still, you have to, I have to actually research if that's still, like, a thing where people, like, do the mail order thing with ladybugs or go out and buy ladybugs to, like, uh, eat the aphids and stuff, like, in their gardens and whatnot. So I thought it was really cool. I really enjoyed, like, kind of learning about a lot of different things. Like, silverfish, for example, I've, like, read about or heard about before, but I really didn't know anything about them. There's a whole chapter on silverfish as well, which... If you've never heard of them, they're not <laughs> not an actual fish, definitely a type of uh, insect. But anyways, I really enjoyed the book. I'm really glad I picked up, and I will be looking out for uh, several of her other works as well. Uh, before I forget, I'm going to add the two audiobooks on mushrooms that I listened to. 
uh, during the month of May. I think it was Spring of Fun, was it the month of May, and that's why. I will start with the one I didn't like, and it's uh, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. And this is one is actually really, really popular in kind of like the nature history, I guess nature writing, I don't know why I said nature history, nature writing and stuff. And I honestly was pretty meh about it. Um, it's got really good reviews. I've seen a lot of people rave about it and stuff. And yeah, it's got like a ton of facts and it's, you really do learn a lot about uh, fungi um, as a whole and everything. And it's, I guess it's not like badly written or anything like that, but I don't know, to me when I was listening to it, it just seemed like it was just a bombardment of all this like stuff that fungi can do or what we don't know about it or what we do know about it and how interesting it is or whatever. But there really didn't seem to be like a whole lot of purpose to the book, I guess. Besides, like, look at fungi and all the different kinds of fungi and how we can do, like, all this stuff. I get, I don't know, to me it just didn't seem very cohesive or it just kind of, like, lacked some sort of purpose. I don't, I don't know, it was, it was probably just me. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the other mushroom book that I read uh, by Lit Wun Long is um, The Way Through the Woods. And I thought this one was actually really tremendous. This one is sort of like a nature writing slash memoir type book. And I don't know, I thought this one was really, really good. I've only read read or listened to about like five books on mushrooms or fungi. This is probably the best one I've read so far. Even though that, like I said, that's like my, probably like one of my weak spots, I guess, in like in natural history. Uh, but anyways, uh, the author um suddenly loses uh her husband uh just kind of out of the blue and um as she's sort of going through the grieving process by one way or another she sort of stumbles upon mushroom hunting and kind of just you know it's just like something there's something to do or whatever and she basically falls in love with mushroom hunting and the whole basically everything about that whole uh hobby uh between the people um kind of the lore the actual act of doing it just like learning more and everything um and she kind of goes through the process of how this like really helped her kind of you know kind of with the like I said, with the grieving process uh just kind of like understanding life and kind of reflecting on things and i thought it was really beautifully written definitely go check that one out for sure all right uh before i also i forget on another topic if you want to support the channel definitely check out some of my signs i sell on etsy here like i got i got aristotle got marcus aurelius i got John Muir, I'm going to be adding lots and lots and lots of stuff with a lot of philosophy, Nordic, Viking-ish stuff, and kind of nature stuff, philosophy stuff, I don't know, all kinds of different things. I'll hopefully be adding out a lot more. But even if you just like like some of the items or favorite the shop and stuff, that definitely helps me out in the long run. So thank you for checking that out. And let's just uh, move on to the next one. And we got one of my favorite authors, Baron Heinrich. Uh, this one is The Homing Instinct, Meaning and Mystery in Animal Migration. And I'm not going to lie, I really enjoyed the book, but out of, I think, the five books I read by Baron Heinrich, it's probably my least favorite book. Um, this one just had, like, kind of, like, a weird structure. The whole, I guess, concept of the book, the animal migration thing is kind I, I won't say it's, like, misleading, because it's definitely in there, but there's not a whole lot of, like, kind of the science -y parts of the book on, like, migration and kind of, like, homing and whatnot. It, the book itself is all about sort of why... Uh, animals and uh, humans to kind of like have like sort of like the construct of a home or a home base or kind of like an area to call home and why animals and humans kind of always eventually gravitate towards something called home uh, over time during the course of their lives and stuff uh, so it's kind of a little more like I don't want to say like just reflective writing but there was a lot of sort of chapters in there that kind of were tangentially sort of you know dealing with the issue and stuff but they were almost just like just like kind of like personal essays that like by themselves are really good but they didn't really always mesh together i guess um if that makes a lot of sense like i said this one was out of the ones that i've read uh by him so far this is definitely the least tech I, I guess he doesn't he doesn't write in like a technical way but there just wasn't as much science information i guess strewn throughout this book um like I said, I still really enjoyed reading it. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, just probably the weakest of the four or five books. But I suppose if this is the weakest book, I keep... <laughs> hey, this probably wasn't, like, the best idea. I still gave it five star. I think I have four and a half, but I, like, rounded up. Um, still really <laughs> good. Just, you know, just be prepared kind of going in. I was kind of hoping more on, like, like I said, just kind of, like, 
actual like physiology and like neural processes and stuff of like actually why why and how animals like do all their kind of like migratory journeys and whatnot and like i said it's kind of touched upon but not as much as i would have liked and lastly uh probably the biggest surprise for me um is this really well written book still life with brook trout by john Girak. and i had two of his books and you know kind of going into it i was like you know I, this i hope it's not just some silly fishing kind of story like it was a hook and hook and tackle books or bullet and hook type books i guess um but i'm really glad it wasn't i've read one other book here a naturalist goes fishing um and i really 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 enjoyed that like a couple of years ago and this one's sort of all about the um sort of science and ecology conservation and fishing stories like kind of all blended together um and this is uh, a fairly similar type book on um, the author isn't um a scientist though he's actual like literally just basically a professional fisherman slash author <laughs> so he's not like you know super hardcore into like kind of the scientist although he does deal like you know with the kind of conservation and ecology um but i thought it was really well written it's a, it's really a book sort of about uh like life and patience and kind of like dealing with curveballs i like life those of you i think when this was written i think i want to say in the mid 2000s i want to say yeah 2005 um where he lived uh out in the kind of a uh, um i want to say in like the colorado rocky area uh they were dealing with a quite a drought and stuff and that was kind of, you know, a big to-do in a lot of areas where uh, water rights were kind of like a big issue and sort of dealing with that. And he kind of goes through, you know, life is thrown, he curveballs and stuff, and you sort of have to figure out ways to deal with it, why not? Um, but yeah, fishing stories kind of thrown through, you know, strewn throughout the entire book. Obviously, it's a, you know, it's a fishing story book or whatever. But like I said, a lot of philosophy, a lot of good stuff. I got a couple, just the reason, I knew it was going to be a good book. There's a couple little tidbits in the first like kind of introductory uh chapter that i really really enjoyed just uh, a couple little sentences here uh let's see so living gracefully in any kind of natural environment takes patience and acceptance the two qualities we americans have pretty much bred out of ourselves and i like i read that and i was like oh boys they could actually yeah getting into something um he, he does a lot of like humor and stuff too in the book because he's a fairly liberal person like he'll admit um especially like kind of growing up in the 60s and 70s so like I mean, he sometimes <laughs> feels like he's gonna get in trouble in like some of these like really like deep red states where he does because I think people assume he's like you know hardcore conservative just because he's like you know a super avid fisherman and stuff um and he's not like not so <laughs> um it kind of gets him in trouble a couple times so I thought that was pretty uh, pretty funny uh but another page like just a page or two over um He's like talking about like seeing this giant uh, red winged blackbird like migration and stuff. And he says, red wings are among my dozen or so favorite birds. I've carefully arranged it so all my favorites are locally common. That way I get to see them often and the world seems friendlier. And that's kind of like a similar like process that I sort of have that like me and my wife sort of do with like animals and stuff like all, all of our favorites. Or maybe not all of them, but you know, we have a lot of favorites that are like right around, so we do see them a lot. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy thinks like the way I do. So I thought it was really good. Um, definitely, if you if you enjoy fishing, I think if you enjoy fishing and you enjoy philosophy or one or the other, definitely pick up this book. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, too, like I said, I was kind of on the fence. I always get kind of nervous with like, you know, these like fishing type books, but some of them are done really well. And he's got like, I think 20 books. Um, and so I guess he's like the preeminent pre author in fishing books i guess um but i think that was definitely my favorite uh for the month of may so i thought that was pretty cool anyways let me know what your favorite book if you can st I, I say that like it's been that long ago i think it's only been what two months uh what your favorite book in the month of may was i'm always on the lookout for good books don't forget to like comment subscribe all that really good stuff and whatever you're reading in this month of july always remember read victoriously